Friends of FanDuel, what's going on? And welcome in to the week three FanDuel DFS Studs Edition. Let's get after it. Let's make sure we're getting you guys the best plays that you can set your DFS lineups around for the main slate on Sunday and help you win that money. That's what it's all about. Before I get into the plays, guys, my name is Ryan Williams. You can find me on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. And uh, appreciate all of the love and support we're getting here on the FanDuel channel. If you wouldn't mind just taking some time to like the video, subscribe to the channel so you can see all the good content that we're going on. All right, we got that out of the way. Let's get to the plays. Starting off at quarterback, let's talk about Lamar Jackson. He's 8400 on FanDuel this week. And he's kind of priced around some guys that I think people might lean to. You know, the Patrick Mahomes of the world. Maybe people want to take a chance on Josh Allen in a bounce back spot. And the thing about Lamar is it's hard to figure out who to pair him with. We got Mar Marquise Brown, who's looked like a stud in his third year. He's on the injury report, so we don't know his status. Mark Andrews is kind of disappointed so far this year. So maybe that keeps ownership on Lamar low. And that's what we really hope for in this Detroit Lions matchup. And what it comes down to for me is the rushing upside that this guy gives you. Only Derrick Henry and Joe Mixon have rushed for more yards than Lamar in the year. He's got 193 on the year. And right now we're talking about narrative street with this guy as far as 100-yard rushing games go. He tied Michael Vick last week against the Chief with 11 100-yard rushing games from the quarterback position has a chance to go to 12, and you're looking at the Detroit Lions. Okay, what do they do against the run? Well, they're, they've allowed the seventh most yards against the run, and they're second in touchdowns allowed um, to the run or, or running back, so to speak. But Lamar Jackson's a running back, right? Like, we can thoroughly say that this guy's going out there. He's putting up numbers. I really like the upside that he offers in this matchup. I don't think you necessarily have to play him with anybody, but you could, and you can still uh, get him into lineups with some of the other studs that we'll talk about, and it makes for a great play this week in week three. All right, let's move over to the running back position. And this one, I might catch some heat for it going back to the well. But uh, let's talk about Derrick Henry, who's $9,700 on FanDuel, okay? And, man, this is a tough one to digest, so let's get into it. First of all, you're talking about a, a $1,700 uh, price increase on this guy a game after he just popped off and we look this is talked about a lot with Derrick Henry like how do you play him when he just popped off in games and I wanted to go back and look at this so 11 instances since 2018 throughout the season has this guy put up uh, 28 plus fan duel points uh, that we can go back and look into only two times has he rushed or has he accumulated 28 plus in the very next game? Okay, now there is a caveat to that because two of those games where he went berserk for 35 plus, I believe, they were at the end of the season. So really not a next game to kind of compare to. But that's kind of what comes with Derrick Henry. And when we talk about he could be chalk this week, he's going against the uh, Indianapolis Colts, who they are just abysmal right now. They're going to be rolling out Jacob Eason, uh, the fourth round draft pick, I believe, uh, from 2020, who's going to be starting for Carson Wentz, who hurt, hurt both his ankles. And But Derrick Henry has had success against this indie team. He went for 82-1, and 149-1, 103, no touchdowns, but 178-3 in the past four matchups against them. That's five touchdowns. Listen, I know he's probably going to be chalked this week. It's hard to digest going back to him, but because it's such a favorable matchup, because he has such a red zone role because this offense is so tied to him and we're getting targets for Derrick Henry 10 targets on the year he only had 31 all of 2020 um, I think that you like that and also the kicker what's been floating around I've seen is just how well he does in wins for the Titans if you're projecting them to win this game 34.1 fantasy points per game and wins to 11.2 in Titans losses, fantasy points per game. So that's definitely something that we want to think about when we're putting Derrick Henry into our lineups is we want the Titans to be winning this game, want them to smash. I know that was a lot, but he's going to be a play that's talked about at nauseum this week. Let's close it out finally with Kyle Pitts. He comes in at $6,200 price tag here on FanDuel. And I really liked what I saw last week from Kyle Pitts. He's getting more involved in the offense. And you're looking at his numbers now through two weeks. He's sixth in uh, target share among tight ends. He's got the fourth most targets among tight ends, running the third most routes per shot 
sharp football analysis. Um, you you just like these numbers here. And it, while the numbers haven't really equated to much because Atlanta struggled so much, Matt Ryan has struggled so much, they do get a get right, get right spot here going against the New York Giants. And so we're looking at the numbers that tight ends have put up against the New York Giants. They The Giants defense, they've allowed 21 targets to opposing tight ends. They've gone against uh, – Denver and they went against Washington. Now the frustrating part about all this is that uh, while they've allowed uh, 149 and two to the tight end position, that's 149 yards and two touchdowns. Both of those touchdowns came to the back end tight ends, if you can believe it. Albert O out of Denver, and then we have um, Ricky Seals Jones Jr. taking that touchdown uh, last week as well. So very frustrating tilt there for the starting tight ends. Maybe we see a Hayden Hurst touchdown this week, but I think this is a great matchup for Kyle Pitts. I think that he's the 1B in this offense. Matt Ryan has definitely leaned on him, looked like he was getting going last week against a, start, a stout Tampa Bay defense. Defense. And we also have to look at the fact that Russell Gage has popped up on the injury report. So if Russell Gage were to miss this game, who's kind of been that viable third option for this team, I think that we could really see his target share even that much more increase. I expect a shootout here between Atlanta and the Giants, and that's why I am going with Kyle Pitts at 6,200 uh, on my teams as a DFS stud to close this out. Thanks so much for tuning in uh, to the week three FanDuel studs. I'm doing this video with you guys every week to talk about three FanDuel studs that I'm looking at. Again, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that. Give the video a like. Uh, we appreciate that as well. And we will catch you guys next week on the FanDuel channel to talk about your DFS lineups for week four. Until then, peace.